sorry for the delay. It's, uh, well, it's not easy for me. I'm also getting into a kind of a busy kind of routine. But still, this is something I want to sort of share with you. How to do your work without feeling tired without feeling stressed out. So, well, I had uh, two programs yesterday and then today also. The first one in, in uh, what was it, in, um, they wanted for me to tell it in English, then Sinhalese, and just two hours, three hours. But I just can't allocate time for people. I try to give my best, whatever I can give. And for me, every group is so important. Because they're all, the whole world, every, even it's like a one body. When you feel like that, you don't belong to any particular, particular place, nation, just this like one family. You get this feeling. Due to some destiny, some karma, we are certain people we meet physically. We have that consciousness of it. But then some others, still we can meet. If we have good feelings, wishes, and this way with our thoughts, doesn't mean we have a kind of a relationship, but at least we learn to send certain thoughts of positivity, some energy. So, I can only, to get my strength also, I wish you all this, this particular moment, will give you some strength, some power, to overcome any kind of disturbance, even tiredness. I'm facing it too. <laughs> That's how to spend some time just to do some. I had to take my drugs. <laughs> it's a kind of a, um, to give me some energy. I, I want to do a longer process, but it will take more long. There are two types. One is to silence the mind completely. The other one is to inject certain inspiration. So I had to choose the other one, to inject an inspiration. <laughs> Because these people will wonder, I wanted this particular laptop. I mean, I'm a forest monk, a jungle monk, and it's a bit quite confusing. I use sometimes some of the things, some ancient saints, I think about them. From there I get some spirit, some energy. And where there has, so I didn't want to reveal even this, this gentleman. I just want to call one gentleman, this other gentleman was maybe was wondering why I, because this is for me, I talk quite th many things against about this technology. This technology is okay, it's neutral on its own, but it gives you so much access to the sensual realm, the five senses, the world of five senses. So my friends, we know that uh, what we have practiced and studied, that the five senses, really they, they are the world of more of uh, illusion. Illusion means it has more variety, it has more um, uh, stimulation. And so because of that, we have many thoughts coming out of it. So it's normally a hindrance to... So you can see, for example, with the five senses only, mostly the reptilian brain works. Hmm? With sensual desire, we have you know, with two parts of our brain, the reptilian brain, and the, we call it the new brain, the special brain. So whatever that activates the reptilian brain, that is a hindrance for mental peace, to tranquility, to have equanimity, just this calmness, restfulness. It's an obstacle. So this is information technology means, it's not information from heaven. <laughs> you can have stories about people who lived a heavenly life on earth, and that can that is definitely, you know, that can activate that spirit. Yeah, you can take that knowledge, the stories and recorded, you know, whatever archives that is left, you know, you can get this thing. But you can't experience heaven directly. It is not a visual thing or heavenly or a kind of a higher dimensions. You can get connected to lower dimensions easily. I will talk about this, which obstruct our process to peacefulness. And so that you're aware, I can't tell you don't use these gadgets because uh, that is not something practical. If you have to exist, you have to live, 
But it's good to have a knowledge what is really going on. So it's up to you to choose. Because our minds are not enlightened minds. Our mind is still like a wound with many kind of defilements and so on. So, so still we have, to be free, we have to be careful of what is given in, where we are, can really control or not. If it is not, we are bound to go to you know, the impulsive nature. So, well, for me to, you know, I'm not a speaker. <laughs> we are yogis actually. So just coming like this, again, is for me sometimes. Uh, but I must tell you one thing. I don't know how many of you know something about my past. Just to give you an idea. I never wanted to come like this until I am fully enlightened. <laughs> and many years ago, as a young monk, I was invited. That was to USA, and at that time, um, my what is this? Uh, that time I told them when I am an arahant, in you have in Buddhist text, arahant means someone who never gets angry after that attainment. That these are the qualities of enlightenment, who never get greedy, who never get uh, deluded. Deluded means by ego, from an idea of self. You see, this is where we. Yeah, and so self-realization is the final thing, final pinnacle of this whole pilgrimage. And when you know, when you have no ego at all, ego means, my friend, to know who you are, what is this self. Something of you has to be permanent. Something changing can't be you. So normally we feel our nails are mothers and so on. Because it's in this, it's, a, it's only a concept. It's kind of a... Uh, it's not, in reality, we know that when we cut our nails, something else. But it's when it's in this space, this area, we get the idea, a feeling of self. So, but this, there are levels of idea of self. Any experience, it associates feelings and you get the idea of self. Now suddenly, say, you are now here, seated, and suddenly your legs get numb. Hmm? When they get numb, maybe sometimes you don't see from your eyes. You might see, where is my leg? You might get this idea. But suddenly then you find the blood flowing and then you get the feeling. Then you get an idea. <coughs> the idea of self comes through feelings. If you are not feeling at all, the idea of self have no condition to arise. It's very interesting. Feeling is just a factor in consciousness, in a moment of consciousness. This is the least thing understood in this part of the world. <laughs> Because normally consciousness is still thought to be connected with the body. Body, body is just a vessel for consciousness. Hmm? For example, okay, I will tell you like okay, you can picture something. Even now, you're, it's always operating. You are not even conscious of. You can't even get an idea of body without consciousness. So uh, this idea, this consciousness. For example, you have this triggering of, you know, for, uh, like you imagine now a sunset or something. If you imagine a sunset, what you, where is the sunset? Is it in your neurons or something? <laughs> it is a completely, a, you can see if you look at the brain how it's functioning when you are picturing a sunset. You can see, but that is only just, a, and that is also studied by its consciousness of it. But from a just a visual observation, but then this phenomenon of con cognizing consciousness is a separate thing completely. So I'm just telling when you understand these things deeply, then only when you're free from that you re realize this world, this experiential world is a dream. It's not a real thing to worry and fear. Now many of you, here you look, let's see, because sometimes, at least, you should not have a long face. <laughs> this is, I call this the happy, you must get the happiness of the mad people. Mad happiness, the happiness without a reason. That is because of the inner purity. If you get that inner purity, there's just this happiness without a reason. So this is something we can target. I know one group I met in... Where is this place? Italy. And it was like uh, I'm meeting 
a group who is going to the gallows. <laughs> I was wondering, I really, my heart was really touched. I really felt, oh my goodness, what are they facing? But after, after one hour, of course, they were getting my drugs. <laughs> and I could see their smile and their happiness. I, I was so happy with that. But then one of them, they have to go for night shift or something. And uh, two of them. And I said, always my blessings will be there. You know, I remember all of you that what life you're going through, you know, to face all these things. But still, I hope they would have got something that they would have thought they are busy and their life is so hopeless. That's why they are... No, my friends, you have not still understood life. If life is understood, immediately you are in a happy state. Like in a dream you, or a nightmare, you realize it's a dream or a nightmare. Then, my friends, it's not no more going to frighten you. You nicely observe it, watch it, without taking it seriously. I'll explain something later about it. But I must tell you that... When you understand these things perfectly, this is the name given to those ancient saints, Arahant. So I told this gentleman that when I am an Arahant only, I will come to the West or any other country. Because I have no desire to come to this. Tell you honestly, I am having a very nice room here. <laughs> but my nice is to give me a bad room. <laughs> <laughs> not <laughs> like bad means that is a simple one. I also suddenly remember the poor people. You know, how can I... I can't enjoy any of these things when people are still suffering, who are still, in, still sleeping in payments or whatever. But anyway, now I had to come here and stay. Uh, this is after one journey with my some of my relations in India. I find that I'm again in a very luxurious <laughs> room here. It's okay. What can I do? At least solitude, I will get there, I hope, and charge myself a bit. But still, it's not something, it is a perceptual thing. It, it doesn't mean that, you know, if you're really sensual, you feel really have to think this is very luxurious, right? And if something, you go to a very dirty toilet in Asia, for example, <laughs> you trample, you find, my goodness, you know, they are not keeping so clean, they're so careless, you should not feel repulsive. These are the, like a, two sides of the same coin. And you will, this is another type of experience. Because of this strength of mind, purity of mind, you will have one kind of feeling which is mostly experience. It's called equanimity. So anyway, this I, f I must tell you, when you realize these things to a stable state, it is called arahant. So I wanted to, those days when they invited me, I said, when I'm Arahant only, I'm coming. I was serious about it. Because I was thinking, what is this hypocrisy? If I still have impurities, if I get angry or greedy, what am I going to teach people? <laughs> and if I am out of these emotions, then I have something to teach. But of course, after the age of 18, really I came to this spiritual thing from what was it, physics. I was interested in relativity. I don't know theory of relativity. The effect of you know, time dilation and also this really f was very interesting for me. We were in, actually I was in South Africa when I was a young boy with my parents. And there only because of the, there was no temple, nothing, no Buddhist uh, kind of, and nothing to, so on my own I had this search. And then uh, that time I, I was also interested in Shakespeare, you know, out, out, brief candle. I mean, nice to say it here in England. <laughs> no, out of brief candle, life is but a walking shadow. No, I think something, a poor player that struts and frets is out upon the stage. It's heard no more. It's a tale told by an idiot, full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. My goodness, you know, just that emptiness of life, you know, that uh, which is supposed to be realized through the meditation. To be aware, uh, experiential one. Now this might just give you some kind of intellectual tickling, I would call it. But um, to get it into an intuitive level, that frees you, my friend. Because this question was asked for me in Berlin. Uh, Bante, why did you become a monk? I suddenly, the question, the question went back like that. I, am, I asked them, why are you not a monk? <laughs> <laughs> really, it, it happens to me. I'm wondering, why are these people not monks? There is something why. 
For example, if you're holding a string or something, you know, like, then suddenly you realize it's a snake. Is that a question of letting go? There's no question. It's just natural for you to let go. So same way, the life, when you get to know, it's a, let to know means you have learned, known from books and things like that. But it is a, does not become a, a personal experience from a specially tranquil, trained mind. This is what we are going to lose. We are going to miss the bus of experience. If you're going to, you know, sort of uh, not create the condition for, um, for the mind, there's a special part of the minds which we are not tapping yet. The, the certain energy is drawn out or drained so we have to know these ways of how the energy is going to go out and then reserve, keep it and then that get that tranquility. With that tranquility, there will be a different level of awareness coming which will free you forever. Free you in the sense it will make you... So in South Africa, you'll find that I'm telling several stories, right? Jumping here and there. This is called a spiritual monkey. <laughs> okay? <laughs> but don't get confused, right? I'm just getting... I'm. This is my... You'll, you'll get something. Anyway, uh, so in South Africa, Lesotho, I actually happened to, uh, on my own I used to think, but through this relativity, I get some idea of the existence of other dimensions. My friends, in this ancient text, it talks about certain heavens and certain other worlds. They say thousand years on earth is one day they are like that. Even in Genesis, I think there is certain mention I'm sure some of you are anti-Christian now in some, you know, you become so this thing, but I am not, I am not orthodox of anything. <laughs> or, you know, dogma of, actually, I would like to take knowledge from anywhere and just find the truth about things. This is, this has been my spirit for long years. So I find that some similarities, for example, you find that they talk about certain areas, certain planes, heavenly worlds, Whereas it looks fairy tale if you read like that. But when you know the relativistic effect is not a possibility, it's also proven. And when you find that this gave me a solid feeling there's the existence of this world. But it made me that belief, that connection, it made me that I know those higher realms are powerful. So that time I have not studied this IGCSC, this we were the first batch. They were changing from O level to Cambridge Syndicate, this IGCSC. In, uh, so we were the first batch. So I have been only thinking about this matter and neglected my studies. So after two days, it was this um, English language and English literature paper that I had to sit. So I went to, uh, well, that time, in the night time, I kept the syllabus and the test papers, past test papers. And when I felt that I had a firm faith, through relativity I was thinking, this, I, this effect is there of time can be dilated and then this effect is there and then this the mention of this other dimension existence states of existence like thousand years on earth is one day and such months and so on that i i just may uh, get the feel, uh, sort of feeling this do really exist with that firm sort of feeling i felt i'm connected to that particular plane and i knew it was powerful it could sort of manifest anything and then immediately i approximated the essay English language li literature paper, the title English language and English literature essay paper, uh, essay title. So these two titles, I just wrote them down and next day, I didn't tell all this to anybody those days of course, I just told my father to write two essays under, uh, tell my tutor to write two essays under these two headings. So my father also went and then my tutor was wondering whether I have not studied everything. And uh, then he wrote, after two days I went to the exam and all these papers and all these, these sealed and all that. And when they brought and when I got the paper, I could see these two headings. <laughs> this was one of the, the beginning. Of course, I didn't get the thought of being a monk or anything, but it was creating my picture of the universe. <laughs> And that was like, I was so happy, you know, it was like, I don't care about the exam or anything. <laughs> that is not my, it was never my interest. And, uh, but that created my th thinking pattern in a certain way. And then that led to another one, 
where we change our houses house to another area. It was a very lonely place. We used to go for walks. I had this habit of going for walks and playing cricket. <laughs> so only thing if I ever gave up to become a monk is cricket. I still like to play if there's occasion <laughs> to bring some memories of it. Yeah, I had no girlfriend to give up, only a cricket. You know, cricket was my really quite a bit of a passion. And uh, it was real. once my father could not pack my bat, you know, when we were going to Sri Lanka. And he saw a tear in my eyes and he really then only realized that how much I was attached to this whole thing. And he said, oh, no, no, don't worry, don't worry, we'll pack, we'll find some space or something. So, my friends, that after some time, it led to a particular, another experience, which was like seeing the snake. It's like, uh, then by that time, I was supposed to study <laughs> astrophysics. I, I thought I could find more truth if I'm going to study, it's through physics. So, I, I was enrolling in Princeton that time to, so this, I was waiting for that period. And that same time, when I was walking, I had this experience, like a sudden, I don't know how to say, it was so simple and so profound. And there, there I saw everything like just disappearing. It fast forward, I don't know how, it was like a, not like a visual thing, but a kind of a, a real a realization. And there I saw a monk also, a picture of a monk, that I should be like these people. <laughs> and that I should dress that robe, that they are just keeping their last body, and they are only their whole life is just to get this wisdom. This insight, that is what they are doing, and to stay in quiet places like this. I didn't know about these forest monasteries and all that at that time, but that just told me to my mind that we should stay in a quiet place, and you should be like that, just they are covering their last body or whatever. Anyway, that was my, the first time I really determined to become a monk. I told my father, and also it created a change in my personality. Before I was so... And other thing... All the idea of going to Princeton or anything just faded away because the longest thing that will survive in Princeton would be what? The granite building. <laughs> when I saw that also like jelly <laughs> in this vision, what to say about anything else? So uh, that's where I actually was very sure that nothing in this world is like, you know, worthwhile pursuing. And then this is, and then after that, a certain peace set into my system. Before that, I used to, you know, rush, close the doors fast, move here and there. So I was telling, in South Africa, this experience came to me, and then after that, whole thing changed. And after that, to now, well, this is something like a boast. Um, I could count the times I scolded somebody. <laughs> after that time before that I used to get into fits especially with close people and in Sri Lanka I used to hit people in school I was going to a good school but but I was like a, you know like some kind of aborigine or some kind of you know uh, demon really so I, I used to hit I, my hero that time was Bruce Lee <laughs> really <laughs> and um, I used to, uh, my parents had a hard time, they used to get complaints always and and then you know when we went to Lesotho, South Africa, then things were a little different. I didn't do all that but all this energy went to sports, even javelin, you cannot imagine, I was thinny that skinny that time, javelin and even cricket, fast bowling, I was the open bowler normally. Of course if I, if I given first opening I would take few wickets but sometimes if they don't you know, I need that sort of pride also that I'm given the... Uh, it was a very nice time when I remember. <laughs> Especially come to England, I remember... I mean, we had some few from Captain Detroit or something. Yeah, he was the captain. He was from England also at that time. Several players in the club. Uh, but anyway... Um, so, in... Uh, uh, what happened? When I have to... I counted the times I got angry from that experience. It was seven times. This recently, with a lot of traveling, it became, it was five for a long period, but just three it became. It was always with the taxi drivers in India. I don't know why. <laughs> I've been to India. <laughs> okay. 
So, so that is because they, you know, I mean, they try to cheat you and then suddenly they press my button. <laughs> but I counted it. I felt very bad. What can I do? But you can't act that you're not getting angry. It had to come naturally with the practice. So normally people think for anger, it is metta, compassion, meditation is the solution. No, my friends, it is actually your, is the way a person gets angry, you can know his, how much he has desires. More the desires, more you will get irritated. Why? Desires means you are enjoy, if you enjoy more pleasures, you know, there's a price for a pleasure. More the pleasure, the more the energy loss. And when you, when you lose energy like that, you can't withstand, you can't uh, sort of, you can't tolerate things, you feel, you know, irritated. That's how anger comes. If you have a lot of energy, you're at peace. Even if someone comes, because you are so happy inside you, if anyone irritates you, it's no problem. Sometimes you get a good news, for example. Something comes and irritates you, hit your leg or whatever. You don't feel, you feel okay. It overpowers that. But if you're sometimes really upset and waiting, even the slightest thing, even the closest people, irritates you like nothing. Normally, closest people really irritates you. <laughs> no. Because of the closeness and expectation from these people, this is what happens to you. So, my friends, then I'm putting a raw, long round to my narration or story. So, anyway, uh, at the age of this, after this renouncing everything, I mean, then at the age of 28 only, I became a monk. My father was not very sure why I am, you know, like uh, he was a little bit upset and confused because all things started changing. I used to go to dinners and all that and I used to take my food slowly because that peace was pervading. And then people were, who didn't know meditation or spirituality, they were confused. Why this young boy? Like, you know, looks so extraordinary, calm. And that calmness is not natural. So people who knew something, they thought maybe he's... In Sri Lanka, you know, they have belief a lot about previous lives and things like that. So they say that, uh, well, he would have been a monk in the past or something. My grandma, they all had a lot of belief in me. And my first pupil was my mother at that time. It's very funny, you know, I mean, normally uh, my mother really understood me intuitively so much. Oh, this is like, and uh, she was the one, first one, she used to come to my room and get this particular teaching. But anyway, this life went on and I just have to make my father happy. It's a long story. 28, I became a monk, or uh, ordained. 18, I became a monk mentally. And 28, I actually ordained. I had met a German monk who inspired me. Just after 18, everything started to fall into place, who inspired me a lot. And 28, after that, only after some months or years, only the invitation came to America. That's why I said, when I'm an Arahant, when I'm perfect, I will come. But my friends, I thought maybe at the age of uh, 40, I will attain this particular state. But it is not in your hand to attain this, my friends. These things, um, it's like planting a tree. You can't tell this fruit will come after. <laughs> you can weed out and you can put the water and just wait. And maybe just don't get too excited and maybe sing a song to the tree, something like that. And those vibrations might help. But if you expect this, this you can't do like that. You just do the causes and then just wait. At the age of 40, I didn't become that kind of thing what I was expecting, but I came to the public. I, coming, I used to go to Himalayas very often, Kailash Manasarova. And... Um, after that trip in 2012, when I came, suddenly we had this, like, people used to sit with me from starting from 8 in the morning, and there's until 4 in the evening. So I was wondering what's happening. Are they getting some kind of high drug or something with me? And then I thought, if I did a meditation, how good it will be. So we, uh, the next I told the caretaker, please don't allow anyone to come. We will do a meditation this coming Sunday and they arrange 60 seats and then suddenly that day, I don't know, no posters, no announcing really, just people started to come. That's how I started to come to the public. But still I used to go, I just do the program, go. Never hectic like this. 
Just do it and go. So sometimes once a month. And then I go to the forest or Himalayas. So anyway, when I went to the Himalayas in 2014-15 Kailash, I face near-death experience. This is why I'm coming to. Mm-hmm. Um, 2014, you call, there's something called altitude sickness. I don't know whether you've heard. In high altitude, I don't know here, this area, Alps and all that, if you climb like that, maybe you get. And But in the Himalayas, you definitely after 3,700, like these meters, you will face this 4,000. So where this... I have got slightly, of course, I have seen people dying also, and I have seen people recovering before. But this, got, I got it really strong, uh, in a way, when I was doing, you know, it's called a Kora, going around this um, Kailash mountain. And I was all blue, splitting headache, and luckily it was not to the lungs, I was able to, I had to walk, I was just imagining there will be a vehicle here, vehicle here. I was just imagining, because I didn't know whether my body could take any more. My guide saw me all blue. All blue, and he was, what can we do? There's no option, they can't carry me. Nothing. But I was also really thinking, my parents have given me such a body, you know, and to just go on like that. And I, actually I did make it. And then one, the night time again, I was like in Mansarova, we went, I was having this like, I don't know, I can't explain what the feeling is. And there's a thought was coming that I might leave this body now. And at that moment, the thing came to my mind, I didn't, I could not share enough with the people. Because for many years I was a hiding monk, a solitary, avoiding people. Just to, not that I, I don't want to help them, I just want to purify myself and really help them as a true saint at least. <laughs> not as someone, so this was my intention and, but of course time passed. Then I said, can't help it now, and then I started to focus on a meditation we train to face death. So these are the things, I, the, that techniques are the ones I want to share with the people, but there's no time. So anyway, I made it that time, but 2015, I don't know how I made it. The same thing happened, but in a very stronger, it was like one, the whole night, I was not sure I'll make it to the morning. And... Um, I was just calming down and the same thought came that time. I couldn't share enough with the people. Actually, I told, okay, after 2014, I think. Then only, I think this gentleman was also contacted. Because after that, the invitations were accepted wherever I was invited. I told to accept it. Now I am ready. I am not ready, but I think now I have to go. <laughs> so, uh, so I told my, my organizers, whoever now, okay, tell them you can organize. But 2014, it didn't happen. But there's some reason, there's some thing. 2015, then I faced this severely. Again, the same thought came. I couldn't give enough to the people. And that time, really, it was like, it was the body, I was going to leave the body. That time, there was an earthquake in Nepal. Actually, I came to look at the people who helped me before to go to the Himalayas. And then suddenly, I saw the possibility of going to Kailash, and then I went. I was not prepared also, and many warned me, don't go now. But still, you know, I'm not a person who sort of, if the opportunity comes, I will just go. And so I thought my best thing I can do is create this energy, these blessings to the people. And that I can do in this particular place. So I went and I got this sickness. And that I realized that time I was hit by a direct attack by the demon himself. <laughs> You've heard about this demon Satan. Satan, or how do you pronounce it? Satan? <laughs> okay, my friends, this is from my other sources, which I got to know later. It was the physical body one. Then another experience happened, which I can't tell you all. Of course, I told my senior brother monks or senior monks. This is, we, uh, but this is like, it was like, it was going to remove my robes completely or disrobe. So these are two attacks, two things I got. Then I got to know it was an direct and I then I saw the strength when you are trying to come towards liberation or freeing from passions and desires, there will be, if you are getting problems and difficulty, then you are on a path of progress. If you are not progressing, you are not getting problems, my friends, that means you are in the lap of the demon. <laughs> there is no problem for him, you know. But when you are trying to really, you are making some ground, definitely you will face something. I mean, you see the force of it. 
And at that time, what made me, what I loved and cherished, all was shattered, all were annihilated. It may be this monkhood, it may be the kind of, you know, the rules and the virtues I cherish sometimes. And they were like just suddenly and something really came out of that. Just to survive, not fall into depression or to this thing. I just have to go into a final uh, weapon that this wisdom, this understanding. Then it just came to my mind, don't egolize it. It's not a proper English word. <laughs> don't egolize this problem. Now you could call it don't personalize it. But don't egolize it is the only word that conveys to me. Don't solidify it, in other words. It's just a happening, a phenomenon. This is how I, this, when I saw like that, when I thought, told to myself, this is just a phenomenon, a happening. There's no I, there's no me in this. There I got mental peace or I was able to continue. I don't know. Just to able to continue was mental peace that time. Because it was destroying all the things that I cherish. And it was like, you know, um, but I can see that all these difficult conditions are sort of creating the gems in you. So don't run away from adversary. <laughs> if there is, that will, by nature, it is given to you to bring out your best, to create, bring out your genius in you. So my friends, that time, this is a story I really like to tell because now you are seeing a ghost, tell you honestly. I see this all like a bonus period for me. <laughs> This period from 2015, it is like a kind of a boon for me to sort of keep on. So anyway, then I decide to take up the invitations. And 2015, they tried to arrange, I think, and it didn't work out. Or 2016, but 17, yes. And three years back in Rishikesh, when I was in Rishikesh along the road in Himalaya, I don't know, do you know, Have you, uh, in Rishikesh means India, in the foothills of Himalayas. I met one, like a... Not a sadhu, I don't know, it's like a sadhu also. And uh, he just told me, Venerable, uh, when you are 45 years, you will have no time even to come to this area. You will not have a moment. So, well, I just heard these words and I can see so true. Actually, I don't have time even to go to the toilet. Even I couldn't go today. <laughs> I've not been so busy, you know. I just have to, I didn't want to put people so more late. But then this is the body. I could keep it separate. And uh, so this is something. So this is something you have to, I mean, then this is so true. There are some things you call, I don't have you heard of Hedgard Casey? Many mansions. So these are also very, I'm sure you have some, it's very interesting, this background, certain knowledge. Um, to give an idea there are certain things happen by certain causes there is some destiny and even this meeting I had a very inspiring teacher he was a German monk I told you after this experience in South Africa when I came to Sri Lanka immediately I met him he was a wandering monk really he was really showing it that it should can be done practically so he really inspired me that time and I was his attendant towards the latter period and uh, so he um, he gave me so much uh, inspiration and there's a time that many he was so strict it was known by others that he would, if he meets a monk he would tell don't stay in the society go to the forest don't mingle too much with people and so on so even other foreign monks when they say they want to go and see their parents or something or relations he would say, he has said, they say, but I can understand his spirit. I don't think he would hurt anyone. He has said that monk was Bodhisattva, the Siddhartha. Was he writing letters under the Bodhi tree? <laughs> when he was asked, you know, what do you do in your free time? He said, I sometimes write letters to my relations or something. Then he has asked, was the Bodhisattva, the Buddha to be? Did he write letters under the Bodhi tree? I can, but un I don't think he will ever cut someone like that. He has so much love and wisdom, of course. But he was a very, you know, some say that is the German spirit or something that, but I don't think he was, for me, a real inspirator, ins inspi inspi who inspired me like nothing. I mean, I couldn't uh, sort of meet his standard of practice. So it just, it was such a thing. Because in Sri Lanka, you find monks are so much, you know, they have sadda, faith. But they are so, you know, 
I mean, they are so lifeless. <laughs> they are no, they are no, I mean, you see, I mean, I think monks are spiritual rambles. You understand? <laughs> they are fighters. They are warriors. <laughs> and they create character. They, are, uh, they go through certain practice, sacrifice. And they are fearless to face this practice. So anyway, my teacher told me in the latter part, in certain part, period, he was telling me to be a monk. It was big pressure for me. One period, I mean, when I was attending him, is to not that he tell directly, he would say, How nice when you become a monk, <laughs> you can. That uh, so, this was haunting in my mind, you know. So, I just worship and wait, yes, one day. <laughs> but so, I th go to the Himalayas somewhere and think that he will, this old man will forget about me. And but when he sees me again, he would say, How nice when you become a monk and you know, you can practice like this, like that. So, it went on for three years. So one day, I f couldn't keep it with me. We respect him so much, we don't sort of question him so too much. So I just went down and said, uh, Bhante, I can't become a monk. There's a reason also, I, I'm telling just now. I can't be, because I want to be a monk before, but later I want to practice, but not to be a monk. This was the reason. I told my teacher immediately, I can't become a monk because monasteries are deteriorating, the monks are deteriorating, the dispensation is deteriorating. He looked at me and said, your consciousness is deteriorating. <laughs> he said, no, you enter the Sangha, the monkhood, and inspire the others while you are doing like that. Don't separate yourself like this. So he was right, but it was a big lesson. And uh, so later on, what he was telling me after I became a monk, was that these devotees, these people are waiting for you, you have to go and help them. And that time I was a young monk and of course I had always this compassion to, this was there for a long period, from that very experience, age of 18, I had this also, to serve the people, to, to go into their suffering and do something. So then he taught me, when I met him, he taught me the ways of serving. You can give food and something, you know, give some, these are the symptoms of the problem. The, the root cause of the problem is you have got a low consciousness. To raise the consciousness to an enlightened stage, this is your solving it forever. So knowing this from his understanding, then I pursued this particular way of self-purification and strengthening my enlightenment, awakening, and uh, sort of then to raise up. So that I can see, because more you practice, more you this thing, more you purify, there will be an impact on the people. Now in Sri Lanka, sometimes they ask, so many monks are preaching, preaching, there's no change in the people. So I didn't have the answer that time. Later on, I was just wondering also. Then when I read some books and on my own reflection also, I got the answer. The reason is, who are preaching, who are teaching, they are not pure themselves. If that purity is there, if there's purity from passions and this thing, there will be a mystic force that will be going. It's just not the talking or this thing. There is something, something from the infinite going. And that, you know, that will make people to take U-turns. It's not a lot of... That charm and all that is created out of that particular strength of restraint. I will tell how these energies come and how it will show in your body also. Okay? Because if you have... If you are going to clean yourself, you don't have to struggle to change someone. You will be giving the best support, the best help for the person to change. And you want to change someone means you have a special attachment to that person. Your very special attachment is a impurity itself. You understand? You are not going to tap that spiritual energies if you have those personal concern because you are still living in certain illusion and you are solidifying those illusions. And the best thing is to help the person is to stop worrying about the person. And that you can't just pretend, then you have to have some knowledge to I have an idea how this mind has got caught to a kind of wrong reflection. So in Sri Lanka, this they were telling me this and then this is the answer. Not only Sri Lanka, anywhere. If someone has an impact on the world, it's because that person himself has purified himself. There's a story about Swami Vivekananda, you know. I don't know, do you know this particular Swami Vivekananda? He made a kind of a stir in, in Chicago, Parliament of Religions, to 1995 or somewhere like that, this time. So very interesting, it said that um, one, uh, one child was brought 
to him by a mother the child was little fat and he was addicted to eating sweets so um, when the boy was brought uh, the he said swami ji can you please give him some mantra or something so that he will stop uh, eating sweets said okay please come after 10 days i will give him something so after 10 days they they came and then he said simply son don't eat any sweets then uh, the mother was wondering well so simple mantra you know no mantra really swami ji you should have told this 10 days back why are you telling it now like this simple said so 10 days ago i was eating sweets myself so last 10 days i stopped eating and well this is how it see he has this motto be and make this is my motto also you be and make others there's some force in it so tell you honestly i was so busy i actually my life too i didn't i don't want to come like this i'm forced to come because i have something i have already done but new things this year was not easy for me it started from australia one month there then uh, before that i had to continue going to the himalayas also the same place i place face death because i'm still in the r- r- battlefield i'm not going to get frightened and because i have not i will be pursuing even next year <laughs> to himalayas those places until and i will do whatever is really necessary to do and this a matter if in case i lose my body i'll come with another body <laughs> and better body next life <laughs> this mind will go it's a force So anyway, th- because I don't want to. If I didn't do something, of course I went to Himalaya, Kailash again. That was the only meditation part I did this year. Then I was in the three months retreat. I was planning. I was in the jungle, but mostly I was coming to do make the visas <laughs> to Colombo. <laughs> this is my condition, and uh, because after two weeks, you know, this visa and that visa. So with this kind of thing, you can't continue your. I was doing my best, so I came like that. Then suddenly. soon as the visa was all okay this was okay and i was inside me i was wishing for the canada visa to get delayed and i don't know how normally in sri lanka these things get delayed but it came on time <laughs> this was something i don't know how it happens against me and then i just had to rush after the just after that chen came to shengen you know that uh, what was it paris and all that that was the one that was would have got cancelled if it came late so that month i would have spent so then that month i would have stopped eating sweets like vivekananda of course to, uh, from another level so it's ca- it, i can't help it this is also a main duty because now if i die i think it's okay if i die now i know something i have to do uh, i have done so that is most important it's like a meditation without meditation when you harmonize with your duty it is a solid meditation it's not just you sit in you know padma uh, what it is padmasana or something in the lotus posture it is when you harmonize that is that's how this meditation works so my friends um so this is very important if you ch- want to change the people around you you must find any mistake you are doing and keep away from it and that will create a sort of reaction the other thing is you should know that you know you should not have mem- memories of uh, you should know that everything has happened to your good normally you know you, if you have thoughts i wish some you know i would have done this or that why this happened to me now some people come and complain once i was going that was in singapore airport I remember one Sri Lankan gentleman he happened to just come to me and maybe talk to me and when he was talking I knew he was initially he you know like many monks are there so sometimes some of them do they don't sometimes they have lost the idea of the protocol with a monk and <laughs> there is certain protocol right I'm not attached to it but there is certain I mean I for me I would see like this like someone is really receptive or interested there's a ways of seeing that and the buddha has told to reveal certain certain wisdom according to that person i mean you don't waste your time now for example this was a good thing when i get late if someone wants to go early it's good then i get screened <laughs> people who are re- who is really interested if they're sent away they'll be coming you can know 
So that is very important to have that drive to know something. And then you don't just sort of be in a hurry to give these things. You wait, wait. You Then the right time, the right people, right the situation, they will come. It might be a little later. But even if they come a little later, that is the right time for the person. So if you try to prematurely sort of, you know, so that's why you have to be detached also. You must be detached to even deliver, deliver the spiritual things. This is another thing. So then you are, you know, working with according to the situation. So anyway, in that place in Singapore, I found that he was, then he realized slowly, slowly, then he thought he has some problems, he must ask this monk. Problems means he was in great depression. Because he has gone to Sri Lanka, his mother, has, mother is dead, mother has died. And uh, just after the funeral, then he found his relations trying to get property or something like that. And so he was so upset with that. Um, and then he was so disillusioned, I would say, how these relations could behave like that. And he was like, like hopeless with life. And then, then I realized he was having all these thoughts. Then I asked him, well, do you see me? Then he said, yes, Pante, I do see you. And do you feel the weight in your legs? Yes, I do. And just what you see, this is all what is real now. These are all only thoughts. <laughs> These thoughts, you don't, you know, you must see who you are. Is those thoughts really you? They're just coming alien to you. So you at least note this. Just stop and just really think about the thought. Think about the thinking. <laughs> if you really do it, you'll find your problems, it suddenly will it take a different, completely a different picture. This is the shift of attention. Now there is one time one monk, you know, there's a small monk, a young monk in Sri Lanka. He was very sick. So I was a visitor myself and I got to know he was having high fever. So I went to him. When I went to him, he suddenly got up like out of respect. I said, wait, venerable, you just wait. I would uh, just, you know, you're sick, okay. And then he knew I am a meditating monk. He just got to hear. And so he immediately told me, you know, Bhante, I, uh, when I was a young monk in this uh, small sort of um, uh, teaching places, schools for younger monks, this one master, he taught us how to practice mindfulness, mindful meditation how to observe the feeling, not to see it as my feeling, it is just a feeling. And when I had this high fever, I, did, I just thought about it because I couldn't bear up. Then I remembered him and I just told, I was just noticing the painful nature of the feeling and just told to myself, this is just feeling. It's not my feeling, it's feeling, it's just a feeling. And when I start, um, started to do that, the feeling of pain and difficulty was just fading uh, Way. So this simple attention, my friend. Now even if you have some trying difficulty or problem now, you know sometimes maybe some of you have heard that I sometimes bless certain things and some things can materialize or manifest for those people. So I will do a small exercise just now. Okay? If you have something you really wish for you in your life, you think about it. Maybe you want to even attain Nibbana or something, some deep yearning or to free from some problem or something you think about that problem okay and just take a deep breath and close your nose like this take a deep breath and hold your breath long as possible and keep the thought in your forehead okay keep the thought in the forehead area and keep it much as possible and keep the thought what you want to achieve or the worry or the fear you have. So what happened to the thought? What do you want? The thought or breath? <laughs> uh, my friends, what do you want? Be happy your breathing. Be happy your life. Just be happy with the simple thing. Some people, they have to be given. Now it's better, I think. <laughs> this is important that you get just to, you know, just to appreciate. 
I mean, don't take other things and just, you know, like a spoiled child. You know, worry about it. I remember my cousin worrying about he's not getting this particular motor car or something, this babe, I mean, toy car those days. And I was, you know, my father didn't spoil me like that. So I used to think, why is he worrying this simple thing? <laughs> There's no problem for him. Yes, my friend. This is very important to get this particular idea that just your breathing, even if you have the worst problem, worse this thing but these all come because of lack of wrong attention you're still identifying too much you're not properly paying attention to who you are what is you you're misunderstanding too much this particular thing uh, for this practice of meditation there's normally in our life suddenly now this is like a stock explanation but this was formed in Sri Lanka for, for the audience uh, like sometimes you in your life you suddenly realize you do like you come for meditation and all these things and suddenly you find yourself doing negative things you know like putting yourself into mud maybe going to the bar but bar must be a common thing right is it the pub you know you call the pub here I think and of, of course drinking alcohol and things like that okay which uh, intoxicates, <laughs> you know, if you are meeting me, it's like meeting a commando monk, you know, it's like, you had, it's like I'm not going to lullaby, you know, it's I'm talking about an extreme practice sometimes, but I hope it will, it might be, be helpful, I hope it will not suffocate you so much. Um, anyway, I, this is because in Sri Lanka, they are all trying to pursue liberation, but what is blocking liberation, they are not talking about in this modern day. So I'm just trying to bring out the things which obstruct you towards mental peace and to show you where you leak your energy, the root cause of your anxiety, like stress, hmm? how it is a byproduct of something you do. So one thing I see, thirdly you have in your life, you put yourself into mud and another time you're washing yourself, like coming here is washing. Putting to mud is like going where your mind is excited with strong emotions, with greed, with hate, with delusion. It may be ex long times of sleeping or whatever it may be. So when these things are happening, my friends, how much those positive things are you are doing, if it is more than 60%, you, you are draining so much energy out of you, naturally, you will you will not have that charm in you, energy in you. You will look drawn out. If you're 30 years old, you will look 40. If you're 40, you look 50. It will drain your vitality. So you must recognize when, now it helped me for myself also, when you open up, when you excite your senses to a certain pitch, to corresponding to that pitch, certain dimensions open up, my friends. After I explain the full thing, you'll get to some understanding, right? It might be a little new to you in a certain way. Now, corresponding to certain... Now, normally we say, don't excite my demon in me, you know? We say when you get angry. So, not only anger, when you get lustful, when you get all other emotions, even, you know, intoxications, there's definitely certain demons do get activated. So, when you find yourself suddenly that you do certain things hidden in your life, whatever it may be, it may be in a bathroom, in a toilet, or anywhere, any other way, my friends, this is damaging your, that spiritual foundation. Spiritual means tranquility, mental peace. Hmm? You need to always be excited or you have to be agitated to be at peace. So it's an unfortunate situation. But when you get to know that there are to find in your character things where you are doing which is hidden there you must know there are you have opened up certain dimensions which are which which are low dimensions and there are beings in those dimensions enter your system now i would call them ghost or something but i'm telling you to make it graphic so that you know because otherwise normally we do sinful things we justify it otherwise we can't enjoy sin to enjoy sin, we have to justify it, my friends. So when we justify, that only then we can go and say, we must say, okay, we take some alcohol, maybe it's good for digestion, it will reduce our cholesterol, something like that. So when there's a medical proof about it, we can enjoy some wine. 
so i'm sorry you know i am i hope you will not feel i am coming from another culture also in a certain way you have to bear with me for a little while right so other thing is so when you d- realize like that when you are doing something really negative like um, again and again this is going to drain your energy and it's going to damage you so when you get frightful that there is certain forces you have created also and that's driving you to these things because when i explain like this is some children in melbourne they you know it's like for, they when they were in melbourne city suddenly when they were distracted or suddenly tempted to do some tempting thing this came to mind oh the bande told there are ghosts who are driving us to these things and it made him stop to do that this is the reason i'm explaining like this it helped me also because i also had some ghost i was wondering why this is happening to me and it was true you can know from your dreams if you have a nightmare is dreams definitely my friend the effects are there in the consciousness they when especially when you are deep sleep the ability for these things to come into your consciousness is easy and you see it in the forms of dreams and disturbing dreams so anyway when you know like that this should help you when next time a temptation come to go to a certain such a thing not to do it and when you don't do it one time two times three times then those nourishment to those beings they don't get then they'll have to leave and those dimensions get closed up and holes in your character get patched up and when that happens my friends more and more uh, the parts that were damaged in your brain starts to get repaired now when that happens very much and you continue to do you you will find you will get more experience of your in your meditation you'll get a grasp of it more in practical situation because you are having more energy you're conserving more energy and when that happens if you get certain moments of tranquility <coughs> that also creates certain substance in our body hmm? those substance is called ojas tejas this is in an ayurvedic term this normally travels more goes towards our brain from a more finer part of our nerves when it goes towards our brain there are per areas of the brain which was not open before they start to open and function and then they give you a impulse you know like they give you a sort of strength to do this meditation again so this is very important because today we need a spiritual some kind of energy a booster so when that is created in the system then what the habits and wrong habits you have got this thing they slowly get replaced if that happens a lot my friends there's something happens in your physical body also and that is like an aura you know the aura the your you become more charming and there will be a shine in your for i mean cheeks and forehead normally i say don't lose this shine if you get it now this is normally you look more beautiful charming and i don't know in this part of the world you must be having i don't know you don't have to apply maybe nivea nivea is it <laughs> yeah you don't have to you will have super super charm even if you are 70 years old 80 years old you know you will have that beautiful dignity there's something that we start to so this is something the positive side you have to get to know my friends and the other thing i explain two things if you don't control nothing happens on this path that is the tongue and the now this is a big blow in a way i, I don't know but this is my discourse can't help it okay i will come to it why i'm just giving some mechanism i will explain in science some scientific the interesting findings also with that i always tell the tongue and the i would call it what sexual i don't know organ you could see that they look the same with lot of nerves red with all this blood flowing and the so it gives strong feeling the, any experience with these two it is the reptilian brain that is working my friend and you have this special brain of thinking discriminating and all that and you find the rules given by the buddha very interesting especially focused on controlling these two as the rules for restraint to reserve your energy and very interesting uh, 
there are two sets of rules, you know, we call it grave offense and uh, minor offense. In the grave offense section, I mean, I, it was for me very interesting. Uh, the second, the, like there are four, which I, if we break, we have to disrobe. And there are another 13 in the first two of the 13. It is regarding certain thing. I mean, I am still in this community. I'm also a little bit shy, but you will get to know what I'm speaking about. Uh, shy means, you know, in Sri Lanka tradition is so, you know, like, you know, they have a... I'm not like that. I come from very unorthodox and uh, um, but it is untraditional, uh, this thing. But I had to be a little sensitive for this, but I must give the points. It's very important. Um, the first two, it, regarding something about sensuality, I can't give the word also immediately, but you'll guess it, right? Now, when you put the MRI scan, the brain functioning, when you're breaking that rule, that is an experience, saying uh, sensual experience, a sexual experience. When it comes to a peak of the sexual experience, that reptilian brain completely takes over. I mean, maybe I takes over the entire brain. In other words, that thinking, that part of the brain is shut down. Now, when I got to know this, it's so interesting why the Buddha says it puts it in that category of grave offense. It's not just he's trying to punish us. He's just protecting. Showing that what really uh, you know, damages the system for mental peace and then liberation. Before mental liberation, you must have mental peace certain degree of mental peace. Before that you talk of liberation is something far away. <laughs> so uh, this particular thing was very interesting for me. So there, so normally food also. First comes sens sexual things, then comes food. This is the second which is the strongest, which, which is the strongest pleasure which takes the strongest uh, this thing out of you. So in Sri Lanka, long years ago, in the ancient time, there was an idea of Kumara Brahmachari. I call about it. I don't know how to tell it in English. Maybe Prince Celibacy or something. I don't know. So these things, my friend, was also in the Christian tradition known. So unfortunately, we have the sutras from the 2500 Buddha's time. But now we must know the condition. That time, it was few people. After 20 years only, he put these rules. 20 years, these monks, these things were not happening. These temptations, these defilements were not happening. They were quickly attaining enlightenment and coming to, they were, it was natural for them. And then after 20 years, suddenly these things crop up in few monks and he laid down these rules. Now, it is difficult to find in this period who is not breaking these rules in general. They will call it biological need. You will call it, you know, something, you justify it. I'm, it's, of course, because there's no technology, there's no mental training technology, I would call it, f to how to deal with it. But there is in this practice, I will explain that. So normally, in the Christian faith also, they, all the religious faith, they had this idea. Even the Muslim, I'm sure, I have not gone through it, but the Christian faith definitely, they too, it's the work of the demon. Any sensual, you know, certain passions coming, it creates certain hormones, my friend, or certain in the body. Normally, it is known, I have found this particular thing, there are certain spirits that like this muck and they, they come to eat this muck in the body. I will explain something a little more of how I got this knowledge. And, uh, and then this creates this addiction and driving force. So that, you know, you get addicted, you just get it phys physically. The, this thing, like in drugs also sometimes at a certain point, there you suddenly come a period where you just have to do it. So, but when you get to know this is happening in your body and this thing and the damage is creating, then this is one step for you to, you know, sort of address this problem. So, um, in the Christian tradition also it was very well known. So, this is, this I wish someone told me when I was a young person, you know, in South Africa, in Lesotho. Of course, I, I, I mean, there I, my father would have been happy if I went to all these discos and the parties in the college they have. I was keen to go very much, but I was so shy, you know, I had shyness that protected me. And I never forget, I don't want to tell this, little embarrassing, I think. Yeah, I had a crush to one English girl called Charlotte. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is recorded, right? <laughs> okay, this is the truth of one thing. <laughs> I never... <laughs> 
I never forget, you know, it was 14, 15, this age, you know, and uh, I never forget looking from far away. <laughs> and very interesting thing happened. One day, of course, she got to know that, uh, and then, but she also knew that I'm not doing any, I'm not going with anybody or anything. And so one day, she, she came to me through another friend. Doesn't Sha it's very interesting. That time, I, doesn't Shanaka like to enjoy life? They thought I'm sort of, sort of avoiding an enjoyment. Suddenly it came to those days I never imagined I'll end up being a monk like this. <laughs> I want to be a scientist, of course, that I liked, but not, I never thought I'll be like this. So anyway, I, I told this, uh, immediately it came to my mind, until I know the world, I'll not play with it. This is how I said. It had, now I understand, you know, until I know the world, I had the feeling this world works in a certain order. And one day I'll come to know about it. And uh, I, one day I'll come to know about it, that there's a perfect state a fo state to be achieved. And But I didn't know, but I, I thought, okay, un after I come to that, maybe I will. Then I will not, you know, after I mess up something and try to, then I know this thing is going to block my, this thing, there will be a regret. So anyway, I, I had this sort of instinct. So that time, even those schools, my friend, they, I mean, in, no knowledge about, so luckily, in terms of relationship, this, I was saved. I didn't go to the, because I had to ask, I know all these parties, discourse, all these people, you know, they talk what has happened and so on. And uh, so I was shy to ask my father for the money, for the ticket, because thinking my father will wonder, what am I up to? <laughs> <laughs> because of that, but I had so much desire myself to go. So that shyness really protected me. Of course, I was doing sports and everything, but this matter, I don't know, something was sort of... Uh, uh, so I wish, but there were some other things which, you know, I, no one was, no one told. On, now, all these things I'm explaining, I wish I knew, I got to know. So, uh, in the, when I was a young boy. So anyway, um, this particular thing is very important, as I told you, the brain, it takes over the entire this thing. So normally you find, even not in Sri Lanka also, other foreign countries, even in England, I think, and in America, I got to know, in the YouTube, they have this, uh, what is this, um, you know, certain groups like vegan, who stick to vegetarian or what, I don't know, this uh, kind of healthy food and things like that. Okay, there's another group who, knowing the danger, the damage, they follow this particular practice. Like, because all these addictions, my friend, is a challenge for you to overcome. So they count the days, three days, one week, like that. You know, one month, that they have refrained from certain activity. So you can refer this, you know, I'm not going to, uh, it's called NoFap, you know, some of you knowing English may be knowing. It's easy for me in Sri Lanka because I can leave to the airport and nothing, no problem. <laughs> I tell them to refer it, use your internet when I leave to the airport. <laughs> so, because, I mean, no FAP, and no FAPP. Have you heard this word? I'm sure. No? Don't. Really? It's a serious word, my friends. Don't take it lightly. Just It's just uh, because you will... You, I hope you will not get to know about it when you are 80 years old. There are even people who are 70 years, they have told me, Swami, Bhante, no one told us this. They are working for ashrams, they are doing social work, but they are having this particular, you know, uh, mistake, or I don't know how to call this, but, so this, there's a group of people, remember N-O, F-A, double P or one single P, don't know. Hmm? So this, I hope these are just on the way to liberation, what you should address and what type of lifestyle you should take if you're really serious to get more tranquility. Otherwise you'll do five, ten minutes meditation, but you're like, you know, <laughs> sort of uh, saving a mosquito and killing an elephant, something like this. And uh, this is something, so this you have to address, you have to get to know. Mm, I'm surprised, really, but good. When I leave, you can get to know <laughs> in a certain way. But this you must refer. So when you know, when you clean, clear your life like this, another thing is, I remember one time, now other thing, going to a bar or something, it, I told you, you know, it activates, now putting into mud. Now today we don't have to go like that. 
the internet the computer you have all the access for addicting thing addictive things i remember i had a certain experiment with certain you know i don't know whether you heard about rishis who have developed their mind some of them in samadhi in himalayas so i had this contact with one person he had the ability like behind you the invisible certain beings or existence who follow you he's able to sort of bring them into your body and your unconscious as someone else talks like in edgard casey but it's a different thing in edgard casey it's a more but this is like uh, i don't know like you know you have exorcism you know some of these um, christian priests also they do knowing the spirits but this is like bringing those spirits into the body and i witness one time where this mother has brought this child to what is this because the child was like not obey i mean not obedient and distracted and going here and there not studying and so on so he was brought to give some solution for this child so then when i i saw this also he just he made a certain something he had a certain power where he made whatever that was invisible to come into the body when it came to this body uh that boy was unconscious surely someone else was speaking he was like uh, uh like this you know not normal this someone started speaking through this boy and this boy what was it then this uh, saint you know he questioned this boy who are you he said i am this spirit some spirit that i am now in this body this is my body said so then who uh, when did you come yes when he was 14 uh, 13 years old um, when i am third when he, when this boy this body was 13 years old i came like that he told i remember how did you come when he was playing games computer games you know i this was surprising for me also on computer games i was just wondering you know that time but then it became logical to me how like we know when you practice compassion and metta and positive thoughts a positive intention brings a positive consciousness with that consciousness a positive dimension is operating so in the same way if you send a negative intention like kill kill fire fire or something which has no meaning you know which is uh, make you deluded definitely it will activate the lower consciousness so when i uh, that was then very clear to me after that the another thing is is very well found that game playing is addictive right very well known this and uh, i think oxford or came did they made this particular research where they found the dopamine that is released out of the brain of an alcoholic that is feel good hormones which you know that makes the addiction the same amount is released of a heroin addict i'm sorry heroin addict in games have you ever got known this research no yeah. it is uh, so it now is so clear why you know like uh, because normally i say like um, for example alcohol also the smell of alcohol the evil spirits get attracted the one day i was going in india you know to delhi i was t- i told this at that time also to delhi i was going uh, to the airport one of the trips from himalayas then the driver i want to share something of uh, you know i felt sorry he's taking me to the airport and maybe i share some knowledge with him and so i just told him you should not drink alcohol it's not good you know uh like i told him bhut pret means ghost in their hindi language bhut pret this is very they are all frightened always spooky you know in sri lanka also is all these people believe too much about this thing i told him you know this uh, ghost bhut pret their name said no no swami ji uh, i don't take any drinks no no drinks i don't take but once a month i take little one beer he said then i said oh, well then you must be having a baby ghost <laughs> so it's uh, even in the smallest you will find the same type of nature my friend that this particular thing you must be aware anything that is addictive you should know if you really want to correct yourself and one by one you should never be happy i overcome this even if there's another thing now i noticed that cricket was my main attraction so by that before that i was already giving up one by one even my clothes and i used to keep few clothes 
and food also at one point i used to take away half and find a beggar in sri lanka to give but then when i came to south africa it was very difficult to find a beggar those days i don't know now and then i was feeling very sad you know and at the opportunity to give this that was i was missing that one day i did find one african you know with uh, he was so i was having now my father used to tell me my i have my i was wearing my father's jacket so i had not many things so i went there and then i gave that jacket to that beggar <laughs> and when i came back my father was upset you know he said son you can give your jacket not my jacket <laughs> <laughs> and he put laid down some rules to me after that that when i you know even the money or whatever when i earn my own money i can do something like that but uh, yeah those were those old days what then i the thing i i realized when i was giving like that i was getting something and more i gave more i discipline restrain that lack of restrain was blocking a certain achievement so this way it made me one by one uh, even the cricket that was hard then i knew i have to give up to get something higher then i finally gave up that and then like that one now also at different stages now i'm thinking food also certain way tasting the food that uh, taste of food and all that so this is something i have given you some points okay and for this controlling now the mind the other one they told me was i remember the internet the same facebook one occasion they told me from the facebook they came how i only know the name facebook <laughs> i know to operate youtube <laughs> that is all and i don't want to learn more <laughs> that is enough for me just for something for your programs actually i otherwise you know some insights and visions we got not using these things when we were in cave silent places first we started in south africa then even in uh, even in the as a early monk as a monk life when i was in in solitary areas just having a lamp you know like a kerosene lamp and so on then only you know with that just having the sutra not too much knowledge the buddha's original teachings and just going through a page or so pra- contemplating that there was this spark moments which still inspires this life and to see that this is all like an illusion not to take seriously what is going on this strength was by those glimpses so this is just an accumulation of knowledge sometimes if you initially if you load your mind with so much knowledge and all that i don't think you will have that sort of simple where you make the mind so simple and peaceful where you get that sudden intuitive knowledge of these small principles which explains the entire experiences of life hmm so so this one time i remember another spe- this thing they told me enter through the facebook another one is it what was it uh, that some uh, the website or page eh? when you almost think of uh, what is this um, opening that page right that that uh, that he is in our control this was very interesting you know that you already like maybe in a website something that you want to look even if you want to make a peek into it so these forces are there also my friends when you get to know i'm sure now in case you have to face this situation you remember me <laughs> you remember there's a spook spooky monk told about the spook <laughs> okay so this is very important my friends i hope these are facts because i had time to research about these things so that if you have any addictions which you have find you are doing i wish nobody saw what i am doing remember this will be dangerous damaging for you so to make your character strong and purified and saintly so you can have those deeper wisdom insights into because it can't be just got intellectually or by some kind of quick method no there has to be a change of character because your brain your mind is like a say water pot if it's filled with dye and all these paints you can't see your reflection clearly my friends if the water is bubbling with you know boiling and bubbling you can't see your reflection also so these are the similes given if you're getting angry all the time you can't see clearly things it distorts your vision of reality and if you have a lot of sensuality then also it's like the colors in the water you can't see your reflection properly reflection means you can't see reality properly if you have mud in the water if you're sleepy drowsy these are the main things that 
not make you see impermanence intuitively we talk about impermanence <laughs> and so on but it will be a talk only as we don't change and bring this calmness it will can come from within you you kind of a suddenly oh my god and it's not something which you have heard or something it will like holding that rope and seeing like a snake that will make you turn away from the world not wear robes or something you will not hold on to things very much and you will feel light you will be among uh, among objects you will be within uh, in the, with the surrounding but you will not place much importance and you will not feel the effect of it the heaviness of it you will float fly or you will have a nice peaceful time even being in the world norm is called creating the lotus out of the mud so these are some points i hope i remember with the internet now internet is not a is a instrument my friend this is neutral is it depends what you use it for like a vehicle you can use a vehicle or aeroplane to go to a meditation program somewhere but you are using it to say go to disneyland is okay <laughs> or something more you know maybe las vegas no not good right <laughs> if you <laughs> that is that's for sure something but if you're using it to go on a pilgrimage i don't know somewhere definitely for a meditation so that is just a neutral thing but unfortunately we are not fully enlightened people we have still germs in our brain wounds in our mind unhealed and unenlightened minds so it is like a big dustbin we are you exposed to and there are gems inside that toss if you have the if you can choose and if you know this is damaging then you can discriminate and just take what is necessary for you and there are a lot of things you can know because information technology really it is a quite a revolution and there if you can take which increases your ojas tejas devotion some discrimination discourses from that and ponder on it that's okay and then you find look at how beautiful you become you know in the end i'll do a small meditation quickly i will just rush through some of the some techniques for you i hope it will help in case some certain this all i'm laying the ground if you want to go on this path sometimes you know like certain addictions you have it is to a certain fantasy we normally know ignorance avijja is the cause of sankara in the paticca samuppada so now we if we apply to any lower kind of ignorance we don't have to put it for the final one even to something we are attracted to something it's all depend on ignorance so until you remove the ignorance you have the desire because of desire you have this anger aversion coming so ignorance ignorance removed the desire gets removed so to remove the ignorance you have to face what you are ignorant of you can't run away from it you have to notice it. you just study that when you don't study it it there's a saying in sri lanka you know for far it is uh, i don't know what are the expensive fruit here what is the expensive rare fruit in england maybe mangoes right mm. because okay <laughs> sri lanka it is so there's a, there's a saying you can call it like that to far it is mango what is the cheapest fruit you have sorry apples maybe right <laughs> apples right apples right okay far it is mangoes when you bring it close is apple so something you really look close you see uh, you find you find is re- reality is not really nice everything like that my teacher used to tell me when you get married because he want to stop me getting married so he was telling a lot of stories about against marriage so that i will be sealed and um, i remember one time he was telling me if you when marriage comes you know first the honeymoon then comes the darker side of the moon <laughs> so, uh, so so anyway so how to remove a fantasy but see how you are driven to that so say something you are addicted to maybe going to the bar even pub or pub or some drugs or whatever it doesn't matter if you are going having something it could be some internet you notice that this i am addicted to this maybe a game or whatever i don't know when you have something like that when you are in a calm moment when you are not being influenced by that go back to that memory hmm? go back to that particular picture or whatever that you feel enticed or you know excited 
and go through the entire process before you experience it and how you experience. Without the experience you're going through in imagination. And when you do like that, my friends, you will be noticing or feeling certain aspects of reality of that particular event. And when you begin to notice that it creates another part of your brain, opens up, it makes a big difference. That kind of a shock experience about that, it will definitely diminish. And if you do this exercise, you will not normally think, you normally try to run away from the experience, not try to remember it and all that. This is not the way. You remember it consciously. And then you go through that and you'll find there will be facts you see. And suddenly that will, you know, you'll find next time when the temptation comes, this will, you know, dif you'll see the difference. You might, because that, that driving force will not be there. So you should not run away. Now you know Osho and all that, they have this idea of experiencing. That's also not good because with that dulled mind, you can't get a proper... So it's just, it's, it's, you can't get a proper insight of it. It is actually by a more calm, at least a normal mind where you, are, you go back to that experience and see, go through that. Then you'll, that will register certain facts. So oh, it happened like that, how I felt, the after effect. Even drinking, you know, you find end of the, this thing, you call it hangout. No, but no. Hangover, I'm sorry. <laughs> Hangover. Okay. This. Uh, so if you really go through the whole process, when you remember the hangover, when you see the this thing, you, you know, if you're really sensible, but you have to go through this in picture form, <clears throat> that will help you to overcome that. So I've given you some tips to overcome these things. I will give you another important tip of how to get to reduce your monkey mind. And how to do these things before it comes to this level of distraction, how to protect your mind. I will give you some practice from the original sutras, how the steps are done. Hmm? One is called sense restraint. Now this is how to stop registering objects that come to the senses. So that when you sit down for meditation, you will not have all these so many thoughts running inside your head. So normally when you are going in a street or crossing a road, you can look at the vehicle. For example, you know, look at my, look at my eyes. I am focused now, right? At you all. Now I look at you. Do I look focused? Do I, if you look at my eyes, do I look focused now? Do I? Now, do I look focused? Now? Do I look focused? Sorry? Are you really looking at me? Now I am focused. Okay? Now I am focused. Now? No focus? Okay. This you have to train, my friend. This is called sense restraint. Certain, you don't look at the details. Like when you are walking, when you are passing through somebody, you don't see who they are. You don't notice who they are. Right? You just know people have passed by. So when you are like uh, going to, like when you see vehicles, when you want to cross the road, you see vehicles have gone, but you don't see who is inside the vehicle. So this is, uh, this is the practice how it is done. In the old teachings, it shows you. This is called, is one of the practices to get tranquility of mind. You don't allow the unnecessary things to go through your senses. Like you're careful to eat certain food which doesn't get indigestion. Hmm? It's like eating food, food for the senses. This is a very important practice. The other one is when you walk, when you go, you must learn to anchor yourself to the present moment. Now in Australia, when I was going, uh, some of them asked Bhante how to practice while you are doing the work. So I thought all the time teaching, teaching, preaching, this is not practical. So I immediately touch one of them, their head, while they were driving, like this, you know. So luckily there was no policeman or anybody. <laughs> they were taught maybe hijack or something. So <laughs> I, I just told him, I just held his forehead and just told him, just relax. Just, you know, experience certain calm, I mean, just feel the seat. Feel the seat and just watch exactly what you need to drive. 
what you uh, just what you need and just watch with your mind is getting relaxed and calm and go in that direction and i saw his hand which was holding like this he just moved like that and just that slightest relaxation that physical tangible i'll be just demonstrating now how to get that relaxed body first and uh, that makes a big difference my friends now i have told sometimes when you go to say catch the train or something now some of them they are practicing this now when you are going to do that just think you are going on a holiday <laughs> i was very surprised these people are practicing when you go on a holiday what you are not in a rush tell yourself why should i go fast let me see how i can walk with a mental peace just moving the body with mental peace am i going with the driving force let me feel the body and let me walk with the body the, normally the stress comes because you are rushing towards the future anticipation or a memory and you are really see, staying in the moment and this question was just now the certain doubt came when you are doing like that whether you will make an accident or something no my friends you become more sharp more alert this is very these are practically very important that if you want to do and in the morning like how many of you have washed and brushed your teeth today in the morning no i mean really you you don't do it because when you don't do you don't feel fresh right there's certain freshness you have learned to experience to start the day same way if you learn to focus and tranquilize your mind for a short while and then keep that tranquility while you are engaging in the work so you remind yourself don't go to a future that does not exist let me first start just feel the heaviness in the body and this is something very important you must you know make it a practical thing my friends and when and washing your you know like hands or something feel the water feel what you are going through immediately note it this is not a big meditation but when you are noting like that you will find your mental strength steam begins to build up otherwise you are getting stressed out and so on if you really get calmed enough you go to the present moment there's another for example now for example okay first try to listen to the sounds you are hearing now someone tick 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 chair sound just relax and try to focus what you hear baby is coughing when you relax and pay attention you don't try to avoid sounds but you just try to really listen to them you will notice your breathing that is a quite a good level of coming to the present moment you're not doing any anapanasati or mindful breathing i'm not talking about these things it's just the physical the function happening you will become conscious of it <clears throat> so when you are really stilling yourself it is the right index or a sort of sign that when you can notice when you're conscious of the breathing process so that is like your sort of kind of bearing you know you don't lose sight of it so if you if you if you're relaxing you must check whether you're coming to a level where you are noticing the breathing so this is something very important when you do more of this you will build up that mental strength you are pumping in mental oxygen otherwise the brain is dying my friend <laughs> it is dying it is dying so when you're giving this oxygen it become live again life begins to come so these are some things i hope practically will help you um and the other thing um yep so it it works very well i told you now many of you are working in offices and all that right or somewhere i don't know maybe factories or whatever it may be so suddenly you get stress i i got this okay, one experience i was working as an auditor for two uh, years that was my father was forcing me to take up a job that time so when i did that it i was just doing for name sake i was meditating while i was doing this job actually because i knew 
that if I don't meditate, if I don't replace this consciousness by meditating consciousness, I'll have to come to this office again next life. <laughs> so <laughs> maybe I'll have to come preaching here also next life <laughs> to in London or England, I don't know. So anyway, I was really thinking like that. You know, I know my teachers taught me this because you decide these things in the past how the consciousness is created. So anyway, so he told me that if you practice while you're doing those activity, that is the best meditation. You'll be cleaning your destiny and keeping peace. You're just doing those work mechanically. You learn to do the work mechanically, my friend. So what happened, uh, I, uh, what, what I did was, I used to meditate in the toilet. This I did in the university also, in Nicosia. This for, but only for about one month, two months, two months, three months. Then a bad friend came and he just called me out to go walking and all that routine got broken. But in, in this office time, I had meditated better and then I had this sort of ability. So then another thing I practice also sensory strain. I put a rule to myself not to look at a single lady. And that time there was my finance controller who was in the office. She was a lady. So I just have to look slowly whether she's coming. <laughs> Otherwise, she would go and look in town. <laughs> So, but I used to go to the toilet and also practice and keep this freshness. Now I'm doing something similar for these programs also. These are all the old habits. Otherwise, I, how can I keep on charge myself with this activity? So anyway, today is a little bit more, but doesn't matter. It's also sort of a test. So my friends, this uh, practice, I happen you, uh, in the office also, you learn to do. The one day it happened to me that now, this assignment was supposed to be given after two months. Normally, it can be done very short, but no one was pushing behind. So I was just meditating and doing all these things. And suddenly it came to notice that the general manager, he immediately sp he told me that uh, phone and told me, tomorrow you have to give the project, the assignment. You know, I have never faced such pressure. Tomorrow, you know, <laughs> now I was frozen. I couldn't say anything to him. Now, well, those days in the night time, I used to attend to my teacher. Daytime, I used to work. So now I was like, uh, you know, I was feeling so stressed up. Like I was feeling so tired. I don't know why. Then I went home, ate my dinner, and I was going to the temple to see my teacher to tell I can't attend on him that night. Just to give that message. Tell the other monk to take over. So when I was going... Uh, I was like, you know, stressed up. I even forgot meditation, everything. <laughs> I was like, then when I was walking along, suddenly it came to my mind. Before the monastery gate, I suddenly thought how to observe the present moment. Just to notice the cars that are passing. It was a busy lane. So I just started to notice the cars. After noticing the cars, suddenly I noticed uh, the head area, headache. Then I went back into the head, the skin of the head. Then the skull, white color, red color, the blood inside, and the brain, the, like a jelly or some, not a jelly, like a whitish thing. When I was picturing like that, and the exact spot where the pain was happening, and this thought, tomorrow assignment, Turam, tomorrow assignment, this I was noticing. I could see some calmness descending on me. So I started watching this watching this more and more when I came closer to the gate I was not feeling any fatigue I was so energized and then this sort of the meditation and all that started to sort of you know come out so I just forgot about the problem everything and I took over my duty to attend my teacher and the whole night I didn't worry now this kind of problem is like going to the gallows next day you know office scenario so anyway I went to the office also so I went to meet the finance controller. I had to go and tell her, I told her, Madam, I have not finished my uh, assignment. That when you have finished, you can hand over. Now, this is like a miracle, my friend. <laughs> so I phoned my, you know, the manager and he told, you know, the she told like this. I said, oh, but please quickly finish it. You know, we were almost going to lose our assignment. <laughs> and he also don't know how it happened. But now I know, my friend. This is unnatural not to get worried and excited. 
But if you practice like that, the nature turns to your favor. Things start to change from uh, outside. And if you remain fearless and focused and unconcerned, and you remain in the present moment, there can miracles can take place. This is one story. So just this is for your practice. I hope it might help you all in practice. I don't know what you like to know. So I just told you this is a nice meditation of Buddha's qualities or some inspiration of somebody. You know, I feel inspired by Joseph. Have you heard of Joseph? Prophet Joseph? It's very inspiring. You know, it's like one of the stories of the Buddha's past lives. Very interesting. I mean, this, uh, even St. Francisco of Assisi, I see it's very much similar to my life in these modern times. And uh, it's this saint, you know, it was when Christianity was all, you know, like then he was like an ascetic also. And he had these voices and guidance. I feel very similar to my own life. I feel so inspired by his life. I mean, it may be Christian, doesn't matter. Or whatever, you know, I, I feel the same spirit. Because now also I am talking a lot about how monks are attached to monasteries and, you know, like accumulating. Uh, this I tell frankly, because our teacher also, and I see he trained us also to see even to devotees and all these, uh, all ways, the spiritual attachments that could come and hinder your way. So I hope daily practice you can start, and especially this sense control also. You can try it out and see whether it brings some peace of mind and you don't get distracting thoughts. And start in the office or wherever, a little bit meditation. And if you did it, if you do the work without feeling tired, my friend, then you are meditated. When you are doing work, if you didn't meditate, you'll feel tired. Now, if I feel tired, that means I have not, I just spoken. This energy I have not tapped. But this is too much for me. <laughs> too much for today. But anyway. Um, this is very important that you should know you should know whether you have done it correctly you don't feel tired so meditation will help your work it's not an obstacle that means you are not properly mastered it if you think that it's not that you are busy that you are not getting this peace of mind that part of your brain is not opened yet and the other thing I explain this should have been explained before but it's okay mm. You have to be careful with your relationships also. I always say for, I don't know, some people, marriage is like, I don't know why I had to tell this, marriage is like becoming a monk. You focus to one person, it is supposed to be sacred, so that any other kind of distraction, even how boring that person, you stick to that person. And it protects you, my friend, it protects your mental peace. If you just go according to your whims and this thing, and you know in these relationships, there's no end to it. There's a story about how to find a perfect husband and how to find a perfect wife. Have you heard this? <laughs> this must be boring to some people. <laughs> just imagine how boring to me. Okay, <laughs> From program to program, when I had to... But these people, they are not here. No? So... So there was this book, I don't know, maybe it's available here. You can find out. What are the bookstores you have here? CNNA or what? Okay, maybe if you go out now, tomorrow it might be there. It might, it might not be too late. So, so one gentleman happens to go and get this, look for this book. And he went and he couldn't find it really. And then he asked this cashier, where's that book, How to Find a Perfect Wife? This husband going. Then this cashier has said, go to the fiction section. <laughs> so, my friend, yes, you must get to know this way if you're going to find a particular fulfillment from sensual, this thing, it's never going to, you know, never going to, uh, what is this, it's not a possibility. It's like going behind that carrot, you know, <laughs> going, going, going and... But if you understand this, whoever you have, oh, there's another one I remember now, just for my entertainment, okay? I will tell, it's about uh, how a poor wife, mm, you know, poor couple, you know, one poor gentleman married a rich man's 
rich person's daughter. So finally he took him to his home. It is in India this happened, right? So India, this actually the cheapest food is chapati. Have you heard? Maybe you have Indian restaurants here, chapati. Roti, you know, it's a kind of roti, they call it. It's like bread maybe here, something similar to that. So they, their normal food was always eating bread. In Sri Lanka, maybe rice and polsambul, eh? <laughs> polsambul <is> batri. <laughs> so anyway, they were always eating this food. And then he thought, oh my goodness, you know, always we are eating. Maybe we, you know, my wife's uh, parents, they are always having good, you know, the butler is there and bringing all the food and all that. So maybe we will get some good food if we just visit them. So they said they are just coming for a talk at 7-8. So surely it's dinner time, right? So <laughs> something will be prepared. So after a long time they were coming. And so when they came, uh, um, so the father-in-law was thinking, you know, oh well they are coming after a long time, we must make something very special for them. So they, uh, he actually told the butler, you must make something special, I will tell you what to make. So they spoke and everything, and then he said, now it's time to make. He so thought, all the time we are eating all this food, maybe we must make them at home. So then, well, it was told to the, this thing, uh, the butler or the chef, and then he brought this special roti from the special wheat, all that, and it was all covered up, you know. And when it was brought, it was served. Uh, so the son-in-law was really anxious. He didn't care about the talk. He wanted to have good dinner. So, so what happened? He was waiting to open and take this food. So he opened and he saw this roti. He was really upset. Then he asked, he talked to the roti, they say, how did you come all this way? <laughs> the roti, it said, it is your karma or your destiny. There's another word they say. <laughs> So it's better to stick to your old roti, right? I don't know why I'm telling this story. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so these are very important, my friends. If you make mistakes too much like this, leave alone meditation. Meditation is not some relaxation or something. You make big mistakes. Mistakes means realize these things. They, you disturb, you create fire in others. You're going to get the fire back. You learn to follow duties and learn to be happy with sacrifice. So this is, this is going to make that inner happiness to grow. So this is, now you might wonder, now I didn't talk much about liberation, liberation, right? About mindfulness, all this, satipattana. I'm still creating the groundwork. You will not have to come to for several talks. If you have laid down the groundwork, you would have been flying now in sky. At least no need to fly, you know, these days that we cannot expect. At least you will not have a long face. Hmm? You will have, you will have a, something happy, content. It should show in your presence. So this, this is the thing that, at least a miracle today if it happens also, because we are going the other way. So these things in your relationships, one must be careful. Even if you have bosses, and things like that where we work, subordinates, you don't turn away from that situation. If it is rough and this thing. We are getting a reflection of us. It's coming like a lesson for us to change. Now, I would recommend you to listen to my, what is it, YouTube. Maybe you listen to more of my discourses, you might get enlightened. Do you buy that? <laughs> How do you know? How do you know that I have attained something or I have really seen enlightened? Someone who has really seen, become enlightened can enlighten another person. Do you know I'm, the, I'm your GPS? <laughs> but you know the meaning of GPS? Guru position system. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right. Um, so really, for your spiritual journey, this I'm coming to a next step of things, that we want to get some knowledge of how to become enlightened and so on. You must get a proper, you must see who is the master, who could be a master for me. 
So it's really all of us have learned to practice something from the Buddha. Buddha is not just a statue, it's his teaching. So actually his teaching also, many of them know it in a scholarly form. But how to, he's so practical, how to make it very practical, that's most important. This is very important, you have to get a proper map, my friends. So what is that map? I would recommend to you to read the original teachings. Because in Sri Lanka this happens. People get so attached to teachers. And they want to sort of, um, you know, they would get attached to the YouTube talks. And I stress this for them to, I'm not the GPS, go through the, read the books. There's one book I recommend, Word of the Buddha by Jnanati Loka Mahatera. Hmm? It's a very small book and I will, you know, th those are things like you must learn to apply those things to your personal life. You must see the world through that. Now in my um, programs, normally I demonstrate how to read those. They are meditation objects. Th there you place the mindfulness through that. Now Buddha explains about how we are formed according to the four elements. Hard nature, soft nature like hardness here and uh, hardness here, there's no difference. So to just to get in terms of hardness, then the idea of ego reduces, my friend. You know the hardness here and the hardness here is same. The liquid nature here and the liquid nature in other water or something is same. Like in toilet, when you go to the toilet, when it goes into the, what it is, it, for it's like the same, it's because in this space you get the idea of a person, that is my thing. So this, the Buddha's, so those teachings, when you read that in terms of elements, if someone is shouting at you, you don't say it to the person, it is, you see this ear is not yours, you picture it. And when it's like a vibration, and you will not react. So I know some people, when then I explain to them and practice this, when they go to their home, they, one of the ladies they sold in the kitchen, when the husband was scolding her, she suddenly practiced this and didn't scold back. I was very happy. This should happen. You see the world in such a way, anger doesn't come to you. Your mind is not deluded. So this is, I'm just recommending you to read these books, but there are points where when Buddha talks about the components of your existence, of your consciousness, the factors, you must relate it to you. And when you see something, you should see through that in an ob in a, in a objective way, not a subjective way. Hmm? And when you do like that, you separate and you will not feel the suffering or the burden that is coming out of existence. You will be at peace. This has to be practically done. You know, I had a very... One auntie who used to get very angry and all that. So those days, as a young boy also, I had the habit of reading the original sutras and applying it to day-to-day -to -day activity. It's not some intellectual form, it's kept somewhere. You relate it to... It's like a manual to understand existence. Like you have this engine. So once, you know, my auntie was a very hot-tempered lady. So I was, I went, came from South Africa, my parents left, I mean I used to get pocket money from her and I used to be in my grandma's place. So uh, she used to get, you know, she used to get angry with everybody but I never stayed with her so I just used to get money from her and that time she took me to, you know, like that tooth relic, there's a, like an exposition of tooth relic and that time she got special passes and took me to s see this. So after we came back, I had some intuitive feeling to go again. So I went, I told her I am going again. Those days there was this terrorist problem, LTT and all that. So she was worried, you know, and then suddenly she scolded me. La 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 la, you know, like how we, I took you yesterday and what is this, like that, like that. She just shouted. And suddenly, uh, what I was practicing, one of the original sutras, which explains what we are seeing, it is perception, it is an illusion. And I was reflecting on this. This is just a perception, feeling. It's not me, not myself. And I was just thinking about it while she was calling. And that was the first time and the last time she's called it. <laughs> so, but that's why I should, I, you should relate to 
you must get you must look at your real experiences through that if you properly focus and applying it you will not personalize it you will not so if you had tension or any other kind of worry or fear if you apply it there it will just fall off this is very important i hope you if you happen to read the middle middle and discourses also there by bikku bodhi these are in english but there are sut there like a few little book looks big but this one sutta is like one or two pages not many hmm? if you want to practice that now we go to a final meditation okay now when i say meditation you all change your postures were you not in meditation up till now huh <laughs> so now one day if you are going to read those words of the buddha you must learn to apply now i'm going to take a small part in pali and little bit in english i will explain that and i'll apply to myself okay before that you must learn to relax your body my friends i want one person for a small experiment so i want to do another small one do you have a scissor with you to bring nani mehnat did you bring it for me or how is it okay let it be <laughs> So my friend this is something i want to do <laughs> okay sometimes we you know the, the ancient times when they cut the hair they became enlightened at that moment truth is so simple it needs that spark attention and it, you can suddenly awaken to another entire reality of life so you are like me <laughs> you have a lot of hair but you are a lady so how can i even jol so if anyone want to donate little bit hair for me he has already done okay you can <laughs> okay ka <Yeah. laughs> so um just uh, uh how do you feel about your hair now um it's quite with you yes this is your hair isn't yeah. it really yours isn't yes, it so much all yours okay no wig huh? no no wig <laughs> okay so um you get a feeling this is my hair right yes okay can i take a small piece yes i will take it where nobody will notice okay <laughs> and you have time to grow you can see this right yes you do you feel get the feeling as much what when you it was there is here do you get the feeling is me a bit or is something looks like little bit no not no more me like it's sort of me yes sort of me yeah. right okay so it is always sort of me it was always sort of me mm-hmm. because it was in that space spatial area yes this is an idea of i a feeling this sort of me you can feel it's what an idea that was coming now you can take a seat that done a very good job <laughs> so now this sisa is your you should be able to discriminate through your mind this is a meditation where you see that like looking from outside that how we, because it's in a certain space that the idea of how the feeling of me comes into you it is equal to your cloth clothing you know so not only your body even the layers of your consciousness is the same so sometimes you get depressing emotions and so on but if you see that is not really you you face it and watch it and really notice it not imagine is not you this the reality is not you and if those visions become clear and notice it, you notice it more firmly so it's just to give an idea like pura tada kan do this is very important when you're reading those things what the buddha explains um i keep it here this is a souvenir you know <laughs> so this part of your now for example you know if somebody i don't know out of disrespect or something just touch your hair or something you feel some you know how rude this person is right of course you knew yeah. this situation is different right mm-hmm. but say you take your hair away like this and someone tramples it or 
do something. Do you feel much? Yes. You do, huh? Because still you feel sort of you there. <laughs> okay. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, that is in a way, but it's sort of, it's better than per coming closer to me. <laughs> okay. So really, if I can throw it out somewhere there, you don't know even someone is doing something there, right? That's fine there. So really, you have to learn to throw it out while it's here. In your body. This is a meditation where you learn to see, really, this body, is it you? Part by part. So some of the teachings, see, Buddha explains to be mindful of noticing this. That is the effect of noticing that comes. It's a kind of a vision of reality, who you are. Actually, there's, there's, this question should not be asked because it's, not a, it's a wrong question. There's no you to have who you are. But you know that the idea of you comes is an idea. I was telling last time, it comes associating feelings. Sometimes spiritual feelings also you get, if you get peacefulness. And you identify that peace as you. Because if you see that peace is me, then you will see the body is not you. You understand? So if you, you, at a level of peace also you see it's a state of consciousness. And there is feelings, perceptions, and this is, is also something equal to the body and the consciousness. This consciousness, subtle it may be, still is in the realm of impermanence. And you happen to notice like that, even you get free from even insight identification. Then you go beyond feelings, you are filled with knowledge that this is every kind of experience of this outer or inner it is a condition phenomena. And it's like, you know, the consciousness also. You look like a dog looking into a well. He sees another dog. But he comes out, he thinks there's another dog outside. Same way, now even now you might remember home and all these things. Or what I'm going to do. It's like the dog, same. It doesn't exist to you now. So when you learn to know consciousness, only that moment it appears and it exists temporarily. That's why the Buddha explains you can't say things exist or you can't say things don't exist. These are two views you can get. Very interesting. That uh, this is a condition thing that is happening and you understand. It's like a reflection. So these things to study this so that when you get uh, some glimpses of it, when other situations in life come, you'll be able to not get the impact of it, the negative parts of it. So anyway... This is very important. Another one I now want to, you'll be good for it also maybe, how to relax the body completely. Okay, then I'll go to the meditation and it will finish very soon. Okay, now we are coming to the end part of it. I told you some books to refer. I cut very fast, but told a lot of things about addictions and which drains your energy. So how to... Relax, I must tell. I need one person again, but uh, would you like? Yeah. Okay. Uh, can you sit down facing the people and uh, use the cushion if it's difficult? That's okay. And lean, because I want you to lean and be comfortable. Maybe keep your legs straight. Is comfortable like that or folded? Okay. So, okay. Now, this is... Um, you all, you should just have a look here. And this gentleman, you should only focus like, um, don't worry about the crowd and all that. Okay, This is just a perception in your eyes, in your eye consciousness. And you just think of, uh, sir, how when I'm falling asleep, how I will forget about the environment. And uh, like I had to sort of forget about the surrounding and just sort of, uh, then only I fall asleep. If I worry and concern, I don't fall asleep. So let me get that idea of not worrying about the body or just taking a deep breath and out of breath. Let me send all the tensions away. I'll be doing something. Don't pay attention to that. Okay? Just pay attention to relaxing and sort of... Uh, Tensions go away from the body. I'll be 
be doing something, don't pay attention. Just pay attention in just like when you're going to sleep, you forget the surrounding everything. Actually, your intention is there. Just completely relax. Let go of your brain in your surrounding. Take a deep breath and all the. So take normal breath and think you're seated next to a flowing river, wonderful nature, in front of the beach. See that. Just on a holiday. No meditation, nothing. <laughs> Just having a good time, like that. Or in the pub, relaxing with the friends. Okay, that's better. That's better. That's better. You're okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Got some idea? Yeah. Hmm? <laughs> yes. <laughs> you must test the teacher also, no? You can, one of you can come and lift my hand and lift it somewhere this area and just let it go, okay? Don't worry, don't worry about the... Not like this, lift very up and let it go. Lift again and drop it. Again. Lift it that side. No, no, wait. wait. I'm in tension again. Okay, now. So, you get some idea now? No, I can't test all of you, right? <laughs> okay, that's no time. Now, this is important. These are some tips, my friends. Because uh, normally, I used to like karate, kung fu very much. And Bruce Lee, those days, sometimes the Japanese used to, you know, tell, like, you know, make it very, look so low. Chinese boxing. So he used to tell, don't talk low about, I mean, talk sort of um, uh, this thing about uh, Chinese boxing. It's very powerful. We use the hip, he to say. It's just uh, using, you know, that particular thing, just using that hip, it generates the energy, the force in that punch. Same way, this meditation, these are basics I'm talking about still. So that, you know, you will get a taste of it and you, you will really enjoy. You get if you really got a hold of it, some real peace of it, peacefulness of it. You will never stop doing it, because you will not want to suffer. So this is a basic tip. It's called kaya viveka in the old text. Kaya viveka means physical rest completely. Then comes chitta viveka. Chitta viveka means mind rest. First body rest, then mind rest. If you don't have body rest first, how to go to chitta viveka? So this is one thing, and the other one, just as, just hold tightly like this, tight, and then relax. How nice not to do it. Tight, <clears throat> and okay. You must get that feeling of restfulness. And another one, quickly we do. Like this. <coughs> this. The children will like it, right? To this. Right. <laughs> okay. Blow out. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> okay. This. No, in a vigorous way, my friends. You don't have to be dignified. <laughs> <laughs> and relax now, okay? This you should feel now a little bit relax. Now I go to a small meditation slowly. Now it's like you look at yourself from outside. Hmm? Now I'm telling how to practice satipatthana, it is called the main object of meditation. Now this is when you're reading those old texts, how you apply it to yourself. I will just demonstrate in a small form, very fast, it's fin finishing now our program. So, just like looking, look at yourself, how you're seated. Picture yourself. Close your eyes. Picture yourself. How, in my case, I am dressed up in robes. 
Hmm? You may be some dress, some t-shirt, jersey. Just picture yourself how you're dressed up with these robes and hear the sounds. Some water trickling. A baby coughing. Someone footsteps. And when you're relaxing like that, you will notice the breathing. You're noticing the breathing then you come to a certain restfulness. Then you picture yourself, how you are seated. All the while thinking of relaxing, letting go, not trying to hold on to anything. And look at yourself, how you are seated. Rupam bhikkave nityangva anityangvati Buddha is telling body, form, is it permanent or impermanent? Now to answer him, we don't just answer by we heard somewhere or this thing. So we just really see in reality what happens to bodies. Have you ever seen our great 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 grandparents? That body we hear, we know there were such people, they disappeared. And even we know if even it was long, we live for 10, 20, 30, 40 years. This body is going to die. Just picture yourself going to die, definitely. You can't stop this process. And quietly, silently, Buddha wants you to think about this with an empty mind, without any previous teachings even. And when you really, you will originally get to know this is all going to change and disappear. So you answer him anityam bante in Pali language, that is impermanent, sir. And the Buddha says, yampana anityang dukkang vatam sukang vati. What is impermanent? It is happiness or sadness. Now even a certain memory you can think of, few minutes ago, what you saw, heard, you can picture that. And you can see what happened to it. It passed away. You met somebody, you can even remember that. So every experience, what has already passed, you can also reflect how it passed. Be conscious of it. So the present also has to change. So with this definite destiny of changing, he asks whether you are happy or sad. Definitely, if something is bound to change, even you have the best of experience, more the pleasure, when the change comes, more the pain. That's why when people are in love and all that, if something happens, they commit suicide and all that. Because it's a great pleasure also. And then when the, the absence of that comes, you can't bear it because you identified with it so much. But in life, because this impermanence is the real permanent thing in this world. This Every being has to face great pain and suffering. So you answer the Buddha, Ani, Dukkham Bhante is suffering. What is impermanent, it will be suffering. Yang kinchang, yang, yampana anityan dukkham, viparinama dhammam, kallam nutam samanupasitam, etam mama esu hammasmi. Esu me attati. What is impermanent suffering? Can you call that? That is myself, that is me. When you see these things just disappear, you can't call such a thing. It is no self there. Nohe tam bante. You answer the Buddha, no. You visualize it. Now, if you see the world like this more and more, you will let go of many things, my friends. Worries, fears, pressures, disappointments. You will see they are not you, they are not personal to you. This is not you, you stuff. This is not your stuff. And when you let go like that, you are at peace. 
And when this mental peace enters your mind, I wish I en- this peace comes to me more and more. So you imagine yourself without any impurities, how blissful you will be. So this same happiness you wish for the people in this room, may they get the taste of this particular peace of mind. Not only these people in the room, like you are going in a helicopter, this hotel, all the guests, the neighbours, slowly picturing them, and all over in Bristol, I think this place is Trout or some place, and then England, whole of Great Britain, Ireland, then to Europe, just like you are going in space, all the human beings there, they are just like me, they are also looking for happiness. May they get this mental peace. Entire continent, Mediterranean, then Africa, then India, Sri Lanka, Nepal, Tibet, China, Russia, Afghanistan, Pakistan, Iran, Iraq, Middle East, and Saudi Arabia, North America, South America, Australia, all human beings, may they get this mental peace. They come to this tranquility and enlightenment. Not only those beings, the animal worlds, the spirits, all types of lower existence, may they get this highest peace. You picture them like from space. Then the higher worlds, angels, any type of higher existence, they don't have much greed, hate and delusion, but may disappear completely in them also. And even the highest, there can be no greed, no anger. Sometimes ego could be there. There's a saying, last to go is your ego. So think of it. Even those higher realms, whoever has the slightest idea of self and that heaviness, may that disappear from them. May all of them get this purity. And again, the human plane, the lower planes, you picture all of that. May they come to inner peace and happiness. This is a nice meditation, my friends. You can notice yourself breathing, relaxing with that, and having these thoughts of wishing. So first I told you how to analyze. That is one meditation, and then changing. That is analyzing, getting wisdom about the nature of body or consciousness. I did it in a small form, but if you're properly doing, you get a coolness in your forehead. And then you change it to concentration or samadhi, meditation of metta, compassion. So it's a change of two types, one analyzing and seeing how blissful when you're enlightened, and the other one wishing that peace of mind and going into concentration meditation. Like that you can change this practice. So keep wishing to the whole world, whole types of existence of any creature, like a mother to her only son or child, motherly feeling. So you can try this at home too. And I will give some blessings now. But one thing, I will give you some advice. Try not to talk today, tonight. Keep this energy with you. You can talk tomorrow. Because this energy is got from keeping silence, noble silence in the mountains, in the jungles. The saints, they generated this. And keeping away so much mental power that, that emanates. So this energy, I hope you keep it with you. If you talk... This will just go out of you. Hmm? So, to, you can eat dinner or do some practice of meditation in the night further if you like to, when you go to your rooms, home. But tomorrow you can talk, okay? If you have to talk, can't, can't tell, but I'm telling what happens if I now give this. Keep it. In the night also some blessings will work. 
පොඩක් මාව පේන තැනකට චුට්ටක් එන්න බලන්න කම් නියර් වෙ යු කැන් සී මී අ ලිටල් බිට් සෝ පැත්තට පොඩේ හොම් පොඩක් ඉන්න anyone have any particular problem i'm sure you might feel a little bit just you can slightly raise i will specially <laughs> okay and try therapy mat wind pute paanthe ana sakti asana satwa ante atuak nathu e uttama ma karuna guni isaka satwa දේවෙන් වහන්සේගේ මහා කරුණා ශක්ති දස දිසාවට you can keep your hands down don't worry just for me to give an idea වහන්සේ පෙරුම් පුරාගෙන අවසත්‍ය ඒ උත්තම ශක්ති දෙලට පුතේ කප ගන්නව කොපමසේ පෙරුම් පුරා මේ අයට කිසි දුකක් ඔබ මේ කියන වන්සකරක මෞතුමේ කියන තුකින් මිලිත්වා නිවන් සෝල් පෙරපිම් නෝ ක්ලෝස් යෝ අයිස් අ බිට් ඇන්ඩ් ජ